Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday, and as always, be sure to like and provide comments. Smishing. Is this some new dating craze or app, or maybe a new challenge sweeping social media? Not exactly. Cyber criminals are always looking for new methods and tricks to convince people into downloading viruses or malware onto their laptops, tablets, and smartphones. One of the newest tricks is something called smishing. The term smishing is a mashup of SMS, short message service, and phishing. Phishing, for those who don't know by now, is when fraudsters send emails which mimic a trustworthy source such as a credit card company, financial institution, or retailer. Unsuspecting consumers mistakenly open the email, click on the links, allowing viruses or malware to be activated, or just to have the person log in to the fake site and they steal their credentials. Smishing, like phishing, is about obtaining personal identifiable information and stealing identities. But smishing attempts to trick the recipient into opening a malware-laden attachment or clicking a malicious link from text messages instead of emails. So simply put, smishing uses text messages as the method of delivery instead of email. When people click on the links, the fraudsters can trick them into sharing their password, credit card numbers, or other personal identifiable information, such as social security numbers. Why is this attack growing in popularity? There's two reasons. One is that many people are unaware of this type of fraud and trust text messages more than emails that they receive, generally. And two, email systems have gotten significantly smarter in protecting people and blocking phishing-related emails, and these same guardrails are not in place in SMS text systems. Roughly 30 million smishing emails are sent to users daily, according to the source CloudMark. In 2018, the Federal Trade Commission logged over 90,000 complaints about unwanted text messages, including smishing attempts. This was up 30% from the year before. Al Pascal, co-founder of Breach Clarity, quote, a saying, texting has replaced the phone call as the most popular consumer communication channel. So while we ignore phone calls, we are conditioned to respond to text messages and fishers are using this to their advantage. What do fraudsters hope to gain with this type of attack? The smisher wants to obtain passwords, credit card information, or your social security number to sell it on the dark web. If fraudsters are able to obtain your personal information, they can steal your identity, apply for credit cards and loans while pretending to be you. Smishers often deploy scare tactics to try to get people to click, telling them they will be audited, sending or being sent to a collection agency, or the company will start charging daily for the service if they don't respond immediately. How to avoid smishing, or more importantly, how to avoid being the victim of a smishing attack. Number one, beware of messages that claim to be from government agencies, such as the IRS or Social Security Administration. The IRS will never send you an unsolicited text message or initiate contact via text message, email, or social media. The Social Security Administration does allow marketing firms to send emails to raise awareness of Social Security's online services and benefits. And it uses text messages for two-factor authentication, but only will do that if you've previously set up an account with them. Number two, a telltale sign you may be under attack is that the message is trying to impart a sense of urgency. These types of scams often imply that an immediate response is required to take advantage of an offer or to avoid a penalty. So if you receive a text message like that that is re requires you to make an immediate response, it's definitely a red flag. Number three, don't be taken in by friendly or familiar language. Smishing text messages may use your full name. While they often come from unfamiliar numbers, Sometimes they can come from numbers that, that you may even recognize or that are within your particular area code. Number four, never click embedded links from suspicious text messages. They can contain malicious code and can affect your mobile phone. Number five, 
do not respond to suspicious text messages. Even if the message says you can text stop to prevent future messages, any response on your part will confirm for the spammers that that number is in use, and you'll just be inviting more texts. You can check out my video on top five phone scams for 2020, and I reference something similar in that video. Number six, delete all suspicious texts. It's really simple, really easy. Just get them off your phone. You don't want to ever accidentally respond back. Number seven, block the number. You can always unblock in the future if needed. Number eight, make sure your phone's operating system is up to date. Android and iOS are constantly being updated and enhanced with new security features. On Android models and iPhones, your phone settings page should indicate what system you're using and whether an update is required. Number nine, if you get a suspicious text from an official sounding entity and want to check it out, don't use any information from the message itself. Don't click it. Instead, call or email the company or government agency directly. Use an official phone number from a recent bill or from their website. So make sure it comes from a valid source. And number 10, if the attacks are continual from the same number or group, you should alert um, law enforcement by submitting a report to either the FCC or the Federal Trade Commission. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and provide comments, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.